Welcome to a tutorial video on learning React. In this video, I'm going to talk about class interactions. Now, in the previous video, when we talked about making classes, we realized that elements are based on classes in React. That is, when the render function comes across an element it does not understand or know, it starts looking for classes or functions matching that name. If it finds a class based on that name, it then creates that object, does whatever its constructor says to do, and then calls its render function. If, it, if that render function runs into HTML it doesn't know, it then looks for it, more objects, and the cycle continues and continues. And in the previous video, we talked about how this all leads us to thinking of an interface as composed of components that act all independent of each other. But it kicks off on that initial render function that queues other render functions that queues other render functions and onwards and so forth. So let's come down here and look at a more complex example than I showed in the previous video and start to think about the ways that this become very complex very quickly and we could build very dynamic websites thinking through these simple ideas of elements matching classes within those classes understanding that we're passing properties if they have any to them through the value props as I talked about in the previous video and how these can all be combined together using JSX as I mentioned we'll cover that in the last video of the series talk a little bit a little bit more about it but it becomes integral for mixing JavaScript within HTML so let's look through this 36 lines of code here the first of which is I'm going to come down here in line 33 so as I mentioned, it runs into an HTML element it doesn't know. Shopping list is not one of the built-in HTML elements. So it goes looking for a class named shopping list. So we started right here on 33, and now we're going to jump up. So it finds a class shopping list that extends React component, which means it is a component within React. Now it has two functions. The first of which is create item, which has a single parameter x, and returns some HTML item number equals, and then some JSX. And as I talked about in the previous video, this allows us to mix in JavaScript. So we're seeing right here within create item that we're returning item HTML, and I'll talk about that in a moment, with its property equals number equals, and whatever value is passed to this function. So whatever its argument is will then show up in here. Then in its render function it's returning HTML and it's returning a unordered list UL and I'm using three cases of JSX here. Now in the previous video I talked about how we could look about the values of variables. We can also make internal function calls. So right here, I'm saying, okay, within this object, call this .create item, and for its argument, send the value 1. And we know, because I just covered create item, that it sends the 1. 1 comes up here, it says, okay, now return HTML based on this element item, where the properties are number, number equals 1. And then it does it three times, 1, 2, and 3. Now... As I mentioned, if it runs into HTML, it does not know. It goes looking for it to see if there's a class, if there's a React component based on that. So when it didn't understand shopping list, it jumped up the shopping list, realized it was there, went down to its render, render called create item, create item, ran into item. It doesn't know item, so it goes looking for a class named that. Now we scroll up to the very top of this, and we see a class called item that again extends React component. It is its own component. So we've moved from this initial render down here to the render here, which called a function create item, which is over here, which then looked for item and passed in properties. So from line 17, we move up here to line 5. So we're moving through these render functions. Again, it's important to realize, important to really understand this render function idea, that these chain together. So we're moving up to item because item didn't exist. So we said, okay, here's an object called an item. It is a React component called its render function, which gets us here. So finally, we see a line item, and it's based on this.props.number. Now, as I discussed in the previous video, 
Whatever properties are, are on an element, if it is unknown, they are passed to that object based on that element called props. So that's the value passed, and it is based on any properties that element had. So we know on line 17, item and its properties is number equals and whatever number was passed to it when it was called down here in lines 24, 25, and 26. So the numbers 1, 2, and 3. In order then, we see I am number, and this would be 1, and it would be transformed into a line item. Line item would be then be passed back to create item, which would be then passed back to the render within shopping list. So we're basically getting three line item HTMLs that are based on a call to create item, which is creating an item object, which is returning its own HTML. A more complex approach that, than the stuff we mentioned in the previous video, but the same ideas again. We're understanding this render function chain of one object calling render, calling another on another, whenever it runs into HTML we don't know, and we're still thinking through the concepts of understanding that HTML elements are based on the classes we're using. So we're having it render HTML, but there's actually spawning objects that are calling their own render functions in this infinite chain of calling render on render things. We also can start to understand, start to use JSX in these by realizing we can make function calls using JSX as well and not just show the values of variables. So we can start to put all of these components together and start to make more complex interfaces through realizing the connections between the elements we use in render, the classes or objects they become, then the functions within those objects, all while understanding that whatever properties we put on those elements becomes the props value we pass to those objects. So this complex chain of ideas, all based on those, the similar concepts I keep talking about. Understanding the render function, understanding how class, classes work, and understanding the way that we can pass in a value called props, which is the properties on the element. All of those three ideas, and now in 36 lines of code, and creates a very simple, very basic shopping list. I am number one, I am number two, and I am number three. But this could be based on other data we pass to this using the same method of calling functions that call objects, that call their own render functions, that return HTML, all within the same React framework and understanding the relationships between these central ideas that I have described in these videos. Thanks for watching.